Welcome back to Stars and Myths. In the last episode, we introduced Alcor. Alcor is a faint star near Miser, and Miser is one of the brightest stars in the Big Deeper. Alcor is surprisingly recorded in stories from various traditions across the Northern Hemisphere. In this episode, I will tell you many stories so that you get an impression of Alcor star laws. I had to shorten them to make the episode a reasonable length, and this will be our first contact with data analytics. At first glance, Alcor and Mizan might not seem special compared to other stars. However, as you see on this map, there are many traditions with Alcor. But do they tell similar stories? This episode explores four main categories of narratives from Eurasia and North America, highlighting shared motive despite their differences. Let's look at the two maps. The top image shows the distribution of the main tradition about Alcor. The bottom picture displays related motives associated with Ursa Major and they form pairs of motifs depicted with the same color. Alcor takes many forms in these tales. It can be a person, an animal, even an object. As we look at the map, you can see how these stories are grouped geographically by colors. In Eurasia, the Alcor stories often appear in the same place as Ursa Major. In America, the grouping is less clear. Our first group of stories shown with dark blue dots is found mostly in northern Eurasia. Alcor is a pot, a pot that hunters use to cook an animal. The hunt is unfolding in the sky. The hunters are generally associated with Ursa Major. And you see that the dark blue dots are also in America. So you have the same motive in America and in Eurasia. Now, in circumpolar North America, the light blue dots. Alcor is sometimes an arrow, or the wound from an arrow, and Ursa Major a fisher. The fisher is an animal that normally does not feed on fish, as its name may indicate. Probably it became its name because European settler confused it with a polecat fish. Let me tell you one story recorded in 1915 among the Ojibwe in North America. In those times, there was no summer. It was winter, winter all the time. People knew that summer existed somewhere, but it never came to them. Also, they wanted it very, very much. Problem was that a man had captured some little birds called summer birds or summer guardian birds. The summer birds were the prisoner of that man. That was why it was continuously winter. So the fisher, the animal in the picture, finally decided to go and free the bird so summer would come. The fisher then had to run very fast to save his life after having freed the bird. The man pursued him with a bow and arrow with which he was going to kill him. But the fisher sprang into the sky and climbed way up with the hunter following him behind, still trying to shoot him with his bow and his arrow. All he succeeded in shooting was its tail. And the point where the arrow struck broke its tail and is now the star Miser. The wound it created is seen as Alcor. Another story that's how the various animals tried to reach the North Star, but eventually froze to death. The fisher is still trying to get to the pole, but he only keeps going round and round. It, it represents in the story the revolution of the constellation about the North Star. So it's the story how summer returned among the Ojibwe. The fisher delivering the summer guardian birds and leaving them forever close to the celestial pole and the Big Deeper 
which is associated with deep cold. Now let's travel from North America to Europe where we find a completely different set of ideas about these same stars. In Europe, the Big Dipper is often a vegan or a cart. They are the orange dots. And Alcar is the driver or the rider of the cart or a horseback rider. Regarding dating, well, the rider motive obviously cannot be older than horseback riding, but it could be also much younger. That's a difficulty. Pinpointing the precise origin of this rider story is difficult. We know that the vegan is ancient. Homer and some Babylonian texts mention the constellation. In Mesopotamia, two stars near Ursa Major are mentioned, but experts still debate whether one of them is Alcor. The last widespread motif is important. It features the seven men as the main stars of the Ursa Major constellation alongside the Pleiades as women. They are the purple dots you see in America and mostly in Eurasia. Alcor is often considered as a stolen star from the Pleiades. It's a curious story considering that Alcor is quite close to Mysa and far from the Pleiades. Eurasian myths frequently describe the Big Dipper as seven robbers stealing one of the Pleiades. This is a Mongolian story that recounts the tale of a Pleiad being captured by men associated with Ursa Major. The tale provides a reason for the robber's action. The Pleiads are notorious for bringing cold. So by stealing one Pleiad, the robbers ensured the temperature would stay bearable in winter, so they do something good. Despite being strange, Alcor as a Pleiad is key to understanding certain stories in Indian mythology. The probably oldest, oldest story about Alcor is found in the Sapatapa Brahmana, an ancient text that dates back well before the Common Era. Let me tell you the story. It's often the case the story comes from different sources that complement each other. The seven riches, the sage, represented by the star of Ursa Major, were married to the Criticas, the seven women associated with the Pleiades. Now, let's read an excerpt from the text that has been transmitted orally for centuries and recorded in the Satapata Brahmana. The first paragraph is about the ceremony to establish a sacrificial fire in a new household. The second paragraph tells that the Criticas, who became the Pleiades, were the wives of the seven riches, the seven sages who were called the rituals, associated with the bears and Ursa Major. They never met as Ursa Major raised in the north and the Pleiad in the east. Now, the indication that Ursa Major rise in the north is an astronomical clue. Normally, stars raise in the east and set in the west. But a circumpolar star is visible all night, circling the north star without ever setting. Now, an almost circular, circumpolar star does something unique. It will briefly dip below the horizon and then rise again in nearly the same spot almost due north. So when the ancient text says Ursa Major raised in the north, it's hinting that at the time referred to in the text, Ursa Major, or possibly Miser, behaved like an almost circumpolar constellation. We'll revisit this aspect in the next episode. It's an important aspect. Further details on the relation between the Pleiad and Ursa Major emerge in the Mahabharata and the Puratas. 
This introduced the motif of Arundhati, which is a woman associated with alcohol. In this story, Arundhati is the only faithful wife of one of the seven riches, the sage represented by Yosa Major. She is said to have moved away from the other Pleiades to remain with her husband. To this day, a tradition survives, especially in South India, where young married couples are taken outside at night to search for alcohol or Arundhati as a symbol of fidelity. Let us now show how data analytics can help in our inquiry. Computer facilitate the detection of hidden relationship between motives. The map you see here shows the distribution of two motives, alcohol as a young girl and the one in which animals spin around the North Star, which is today Polaris. You see the red lozenge indicate when both motives are present. A quite many tradition with both motives. In dark blue, one has a tradition with only the alcohol motive, and in light blue, the tradition in which only the North Star motive is found. Focus on our Eurasia. Both motives are associated in 50% of the case, and that in that a connection between the North and alcohol. Let me tell a story. It's a Kazakh story. Ursa Major guards two horses tied to a stake. The North Pole. If the rope breaks, then the universe will end. The motif of animals spinning around the pole star is also found in India, but oxen replace horses, at least uh, in a writing from the 9th century. The two motifs exhibit a related geographic distribution as shown on the map. The similarity between them can be computed using a simple measure. This measure of similarity is known as the Jacquard similarity, and it will be our first example of data analytics in use. Let me explain how the similarity score is calculated. First, we count the number of places where both motifs are found together. On a map, there are eight of these, as you read it from the bottom right of the image. Next, we count the total number of traditions that have either one or both motif. See that 10 for alcohol, 11 for the animal, plus the 8 make 29 different traditions. And now you can calculate the similarity score by just dividing 8 by 29, which gives 28%. So the region where the players Alco and Yosa Major are associated in stories correspond to a region where an, an animal, often a horse, rotate around the North Star. This jackal similarity made it possible to automatically detect the association between this motive. It's a simple but efficient example of data analytics. Connection between tradition can also be extracted from ancient texts. So, let's move to Persia. Al-Biruni was a brilliant polymath from Central Asia, living over a thousand years ago. He famously computed the Earth's radius using geodesy, employing a method shown in the top left insert, which used a simple but yet clever triangulation technique. The measurement of the Earth's radius was done during a journey to the Punjab at Fort Nandana, located in modern-day Pakistan. He also computed longitudes by observing a lunar eclipse with a colleague at two different locations. He is well remembered in Uzbekistan, his birthplace, with stamps that represent him and his work. Crucially, for our story, he was deeply interested in Indian culture learned Sanskrit, not easy, and translated ancient text. In his book about India, he specifically mentioned the stories connecting Alcor to the stars in Ursa Major, the seven riches, and the tradition about the celestial pole. He wrote even a small chapter on the celestial pole representation in India. Here I quote, 
the wind drives the stars round the pole which are bound to it by invisible ties to man like the beam of an olive press. Here doesn't mention oxen, still the idea is quite similar. Albri René's work not only relates India to Persia but also furnishes a link to other traditions, such as the Turkic speaking traditions that were deeply influenced by Persia, and share the alcohol motif of a young girl and animal circling the pole star. This example illustrates the value of employing various methods in the study of myths. There are still many mysteries concerning the chronology. How did the alcohol story reach Mongolia? Was it from India or, or the West? Or was the story even older in Mongolia than in India, considering that both stories about the North Pole and alcohol are also found in America? All possibilities must be analyzed before conclusion can be reached. It's one of the main difficulties in such studies. So the next episode will bring new elements to the alcohol case. So what did we learn in this episode? First and foremost, we learned that for millennia, humanity has projected its stories onto the sky. An important aspect is that the distribution of myth motif is not random. Motifs group in distinct, distinct geographic areas, including sometimes several continents. Motifs are like Lego pieces. They can be combined and, and replaced within a region to form new current stories. New motifs are sometimes created with the introduction of the chariot, a motif emerged in ancient Salos. We discovered that information can be gained by combining geographic data with historical record to reconstruct aspects of the past, but this approach has its limit, especially when dealing with purely oral tradition. But all the motifs we have seen, the story of Alcor as a stolen star remains the most puzzling one, and we will return to it next time. In the next episode, we will delve into the past sky to examine how the star have shifted due to procession and discuss some related challenges in analyzing ancient myth. We'll introduce new element to the Alcor file in India. Stay tuned. Will be a very special episode combining history with astronomy in an unusual way. And as always, I give you here now uh, some elements for further reading. So if you want to dive in, uh, you can go ahead. Thank you very much. See you next time.